What's going on internet? IG here again today with another Linux distro review. Oh my goodness, it's been a little while. So after my uh, after my adventures in Solus, and uh, don't get me wrong, I'm still very, very curious about the Solus project and where it's headed. Um, but I really wanted to have a look at KDE Neon. I have had this on my hit list for so long now, I've just not had the time to get around to it. So today we are digging into KDE Neon as it stands in April of 2018. Let's check it out. Okay, now the story with KDE Neon, if you're not familiar, um, and again, most of you will probably know this story probably better than me at this point. Basically, the K desktop environment wanted a flagship operating system that could uh, show off the latest and greatest of KDE on top of a stable base. So they could really show people what uh, K the K desktop environment was capable of, and very specifically, what Plasma 5 was capable of. Now, here we are in 2018. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but I did a video back uh, of the K desktop environment or the Plasma 5.4, I believe it was back in 2015, in September of 2015. I'll chuck a link of that right up here right now so you can go check that out. Because honestly, a lot of my feelings about K desktop environment or KDE really uh, stand strong. The Plasma desktop keeps maturing and this is the spot uh, this is the place, I feel like KDE is at a place now where it is so stable and so mature in so many ways and they've tri stripped out so much of the bloat that, um, that you know, the Plasma desktop used to be famous for and uh, really it's actually one of the leanest, meanest uh, operating systems or, or desktop environments out there nowadays, at least leanest and meanest for how many features it offers. Um, and really that kind of summarizes my, my feelings about KDE and KDE Neon as a whole. Because really there's not too much to this distribution. It's based on the LTS release of Ubuntu, uh, it uses the same package management system. There's really not much to write home about there. This is about the Plasma desktop front and center and about showing off what this thing is capable of. So first thing I wanna do is actually jump into the software center because this is something that actually genuinely surprised me. So the, the last time I checked out the Discover app, the, the software that you use to find and install different software on your Plasma desktop, I was, I was very underwhelmed. Um, it was a pretty lousy piece of software in my opinion and I thought, oh great, here we go, another software manager that is just lackluster. Um, but here it is in, in uh, Plasma Desktop 5.12, incidentally also a long-term support release of Plasma, which is why I'm checking it out now. This is meant to be kind of the way it stands for a little while and uh, and will stay supported for quite some time. And I gotta say, I'm pleasantly surprised by this software manager. Not only does it have fantastic categories and, uh, and fantastic graphical representations of all of the apps that you could want, but it actually puts the uh, it actually puts the, the function of each app front and center. So you're not left wondering what a package does. You actually get a really good idea of what each package achieves uh, right at the start. And not only that, but it also does does a really great job of showing some really great examples of open source software front and center instead of forcing you to go digging and digging through uh, through you know varying qualities of uh, of software so for example games man i can jump in here i can see that there are some pretty good games up for grabs here and again all of this the availability of all this kind of stuff is dependent on what kind of repositories you have running in the background but honestly the the way that this software center is is laid out there's actually and i'm going to come back to this a few times as a theme it's actually not a bad use of space <coughs> mkbhd anyway the um the amount of white space that KDE is, is utilizing here is actually uh, a lot more significantly better than, uh, than what it was in times past. Now, I can't say that about the entire Plasma desktop as a general rule, but needless to say, I'm, in qu I'm quite impressed by, uh, by this software center and, uh, and the way it's presenting quality open source software front and center, because I feel like that is a huge uh, setback for so many distributions. Um, so it's great to see that they've put that kind of effort into the software center. Now, in terms of where is Plasma at as a desktop environment? Well, the first thing I wanna show you guys is just how much resources it's using. So at the moment, 
Um, when I first booted this up, it was sitting at around 400 meg of RAM, and it's actually settled down uh, to about 370 meg of RAM, and I've already had some stuff open and I've been playing around with it. And as you can see, I've got two CPU cores that are barely doing anything right now. This to me is very, very impressive. Yes, I don't have anything going on on my desktop, but compare these stats to what KDE Plasma Desktop looked like um, even three years ago, and this is a vast improvement. And that's what really makes me excited about this project in particular. Now I realize the Plasma Desktop as a whole, and I guess I'm generalizing here when I talk about KDE Neon, um, because really I'm talking about Plasma as a whole, uh, it has improved so much in terms of performance and uh, responsiveness. Now, yes, I absolutely am running this in a virtual environment um, and you know I've given it four gig of RAM to play around with and I think 128 gig on the graphics side of things. There's nothing fancy going on here with the, the graphics um, side of things. I haven't enabled any crazy desktop effects, but really nowadays I feel like most of us just want uh, functionality out of our PC and those that do want the fancy graphics you know, absolutely, you can go and enable them, they're there. So let's dig around in the system settings very quickly and see what is changed here. And again, this is uh, another really excellent example of how KDE has, uh, or the Plasma Desktop has trimmed the fat on, uh, on the amount of blank space that's being used. Again, we've kind of uh, been introduced to this idea of the sidebar, and we're actually seeing this all over the place um, with GNOME and with KDE and uh, and I'm sure other, and Budgie as well as a desktop environment are all using these sidebars when it comes to system settings now. And to me, this makes so much more sense than what we had uh, before with single icon styles. Um, again, it, it makes glanceability so much better. Um, the design flow is consistent across the, uh, across the, the desktop environment. One other thing that I will get to in just a second is how um, KDE is making the discoverability of all of their options a lot easier now than what it was. Um, but again, this is kind of, I feel like the Plasma desktop is in a bit of a renaissance at the moment where so many Plasma desktop users who were estranged by uh, the bloat that was introduced in KDE 4 when they did the massive rewrite there. And when again, they did the huge rewrite for KDE Plasma Desktop 5, um, there, there was a lot of KDE users that were kind of left in the dark a little bit. And I feel like they're starting to bring some of that back. And especially since uh, GNOME, has, uh, GNOME has gone a completely different direction. Um, but okay, so back to the system settings. Now, not all of this is brand spanking new, but it is good to see that they're rethinking how we do the fundamentals and, uh, and asking the big questions like, how do we make this more efficient, remove some of the white space, uh, and make it make more sense as, as a user interface. Um, because I feel like in the past, this is what held KDE back, was the fact that they had so much power, so many options, but a very, um, a very cluttered way of presenting that information to the user. Whereas nowadays, this is honestly something that you could drop in front of somebody and they'd be very, very uh, familiar with how this works. Because literally, they've seen the exact same system settings uh, layout on their phone, on their iPad, um, on their Windows computer, you know, all of these, um, all of these design schemes that we're used to seeing uh, are finally making their way into the Plasma desktop, which I think is a big win. Um, power management is something that, um, that KDE is also really improved on. And there's very few um, desktop environments which can give you the level of, of uh, energy saving options that the Plasma desktop can. So I would never used to recommend the Plasma desktop if you were on a laptop, simply because it was too power hungry. Now I'd be almost confident sharing it as like the number one option because of just how many options you get here with, uh, with how you wanna save power and, uh, and what you wanna do there. So again, they've got different options for if you're on AC power, if you're on battery, on low battery. KDE Connect is again, another thing that I think is a fantastic innovation that we don't, uh, that we don't appreciate enough. If you have an Android device, you can connect it to KDE and use it to manage things like notifications, replying to text messages, that kind of thing. Fantastic little universal tweak there that just makes that initial step of making your computer work for you that much easier. Now, in terms of default look and feel, honestly, since 2015, the default theme hasn't changed too much. If anything, it's probably simplified a little bit since when Plasma 5 uh, first came out. But here in 2018, we don't, we're not looking for pizzazz. We're looking probably more for function, more than something that, uh, that looks impressive. And, uh, and 
I am a personal fan of a universal dark theme. So anytime I get a, a, uh, an option to enable a dark theme, I'm going to take it because uh, it's just easy on the eyes and I love the high contrast setting. Okay, now you will notice that in some of these areas where my mouse hasn't reloaded that the mouse size jumps around. That's because I'm on a high pixel density, density display running with some scaling. So that's why that looks a little funky there in case you're wondering. All right, so uh, default app selection. I don't even feel like you guys need to know about this because it's really the bare bones. Um, KDE Neon does not uh, pretend to be fully loaded or in any way ready for everyday use. Um, they literally package the bare minimum and mostly uh, showcasing what KDE can do or the Plasma desktop can do uh, as an environment. Thankfully, the software center is so incredibly strong that, uh, that they don't really lose out on any of that. Now, again, I want to reiterate just how ridiculously powerful the Plasma desktop is. And I think if you're a power user, this should be the desktop environment of your choice. Now, what gets me personally very excited, I love the technicality and the, um, the design philosophy and the development process behind the Solus project. Um, I think they've got a fascinating model running and, uh, and I'm really enjoying following that project. And what I'm very excited about is the possibility of, and the fact that the Plasma desktop is in the works and it's gonna be coming to the Solus project. Now. I realize I'm doing a bit of a weird plug there in the middle of KDE Neon. But what I will say is if you are looking for an absolute flagship killer Plasma desktop experience right here, right now, KDE Neon is consistently the place to get it. The fact that it's built on a solid uh, LTS Ubuntu base means you are gonna be making a bit of a sacrifice when it comes to uh, wider software and how up to date that software is. But at the same time, you do get the absolute latest in the stable KDE land. So if you are gonna decide that you wanna make KDE uh, and you wanna make the Plasma desktop your home and really dig in and uh, you know set up shop here for, for a while, then, um, then KDE Neon is a brilliant place to do that. And for that, this is the distro that the Plasma desktop always needed to showcase how to do it right. Um, because absolutely there are some other great KDE desktops out there, but none of them I, I feel capture the essence of what the Plasma desktop, uh, what it wants to achieve as well as what KDE Neon does. Also a very quick shout out to their uh, to their Slimbook. I think it's pretty amazing. Um, so, you know, if you're in the market for a laptop that is Linux friendly and, uh, and features the Plasma desktop first and foremost, then definitely check out the Slimbook. I'm not, I, I'm not sort of affiliated with them or sponsored by them in any way. I just think it's amazing, so it's worth a plug. Um, so basically that kind of summarizes my thoughts on this whole thing. Now, I think at, on a technical level, so much of the polish that has come to Plasma Desktop 5.12 comes from uh, all of the underground work that's been going on with the KDE frameworks and also with Qt or Qt. I'm not exactly sure how you say that, but the more and more that all of the KDE suite of apps, whether it's Kden Live, Digicam, uh, the Office suite, as more and more of those, and most of them already are, as more and more KDE apps make their way over to Qt or Qt um, version five, uh, I feel like the efficiency of this operating system just gets better and better. Um, and personally, I think it's a, it's a and again, coming back to Solus, um, I think it's an interesting move that they're wanting to uh, recode um, the budgie desktop environment in Qt5 or Qt5. Um, and again, that's a, that's a random interlude there. Um, one other thing I will plug before I go is, um, I, I know I come back to this a lot, but man, I am a sucker for keyboard launches and KRunner has got to be one of the best out there. I've really been looking for a keyboard uh, a keyboard launcher that is as powerful as KRunner is on other desktop environments like Budgie, <coughs> and I have yet to find one. So if, uh, if you guys know of any good keyboard launchers, let me know in the comments below. Guys, that'll be it for this video. I realize I've already chatted for well over 10 minutes now. Um, so look, if you are in the mood to check out Plasma Desktop 5, if it's been a while, KDE Neon is the place to go. And, uh, and I will almost guarantee that you will be impressed on some level or other because the amount of polish and, uh, and responsiveness, performance, um, power user features that you can find in Plasma 5 is just off the charts at this point. 
And uh, yeah, look, I could find nitpicky things to say about it, um, but really it's going to come down to your own personal preference. For me personally, I would love to give Plasma Desktop 5 a decent run for its money as a daily driver. Um, but right now, as of right now, I will probably wait and uh, I will uh, let it arrive on Solus and give it a go on there. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you all in the next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.